Religion plays a major role in everybody, uh, in 90% of Americans' life. It shapes the way we think, we talk, and we act. But is this, but should this, should it always affect the way that we act? Uh, my name is Darwin Reed, and my, today my project twenty eight is about people using religion as a, um, as an excuse for having personal bias. And this is not always the case. You may be thinking, what does that mean? Well, for example, uh, a big one is many Christian people in Christian uh, faith believe that being gay is not right because of their religion. Or another example would be the, the way that uh, Muslim men or people of the Islamic faith treat their women. Or in another uh, would be uh, people, or even people being scared of their religion. Like a lot of people in today, I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of people in today's America are afraid of the Muslim uh, faith. I believe this is because we don't really understand our religion along with not understanding other people. This problem is the stem from not understanding religion as a whole. I talked to three sources. Uh, my mother, who uh, I talked to her because uh, she's she is a Christian woman, but she believes in everybody's personal rights and everybody is everybody. She looks at a person as a person and not doesn't look at them based on how the how the religion is structured. Uh, then I talked to my pastor. Uh, many of you guys may think, why pastor? He's obviously going to have bodies. This is exactly why I chose him to prove my point of how the really his how being a pastor has um, shaped his thinking of the way people and now uh, looks at the society as a whole. Then I chose uh, a psychologist, uh, Dr. Uh, Asha Blade, I think. That's what it's, I don't know if you know name, but uh, Dr. Babe. Uh, she uh, gave me two uh, words to look up. Cognitive dissonance and uh, confirmation bias. Uh, cognitive dissonance uh, means having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes uh, while behaving or interacting with people. And uh, confirmation bias is the tendency to interpret new ideas as proof of, of already existing uh, beliefs and theories. I think these words, I think these two uh, phrases are key because uh, with cognitive uh, dissonance, uh, Having inconsistency in your uh, teaching, like for example, uh, I'll go back to the Muslim uh, and uh, the way that they treat their women. Well, in the Quran, it, the Quran tells you to treat women with more respect than they actually do. People, a lot of people don't know that, but it's true. But with um, even uh, to go back to the Christian belief in being uh, homosexual is wrong. Well, also it says the Bible also says you shouldn't judge people because you were born with sin too. Uh, and then. With the Muslim people are not, I just think people don't understand Muslim because of uh, all the terrorists that happen. People assume that they are not Muslim. This is not always true. A lot of terrorist attacks have been from non people of non Muslim faith, just people who just do dumb things. Uh, and then for the confirmation biases, uh, people tend to uh, just say one thing and be like, oh yeah, that's that's right. Like, um, like uh, again, we're going back to the Muslim thing. One Muslim. Uh, Say a, a Muslim terrorist actually does bomb uh, a place or does a type of terrorist. People will think, oh, well, since he did it, everybody else does it. All other, other Muslims does it. And that's not just technically true. Or, um, yeah. So my plan uh, to solve this is to start teaching kids young, uh, meaning setting up classes for new parents or for uh, us as students, as future parents, maybe, maybe not. Just teaching our kids to not look at a person's religion or their background. Just look at the person for the person, for the person that they are. Because everybody deserves a chance. Um, yeah. I believe your statement was 90% of Americans are affected by religion. About 90% it comes from the Pew Research. That's what they want. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by, I mean, elaborate on that a little bit, uh, affected by religion? 90% of meaning, uh, not just Christianity, but especially in the U.S., which is considered a melting pot of people, many people in our country have religion. About 70% 70 of us are in Christian faith, because this, uh, I, this country was set up based on some type of Christian faith. No, 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 that's not correct. 
the country wasn't founded on the Christian faith, not at all. Nothing in the Constitution about that at all. But anyway, um, are you a Christian, Darnell? Uh, you can say that. What do you mean I can say that? You can say that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, elaborate a little bit, then I'll uh, uh, defer to my colleagues here. Uh, you referred several times to how Muslim men treat their women. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, in the Muslim countries, uh, no, I guess in Muslim countries, uh, countries where Muslim is the predominant religion, women are like treated not as equal to men a lot of times, but this is a, if they're going to to based off the true Quran, and the Quran literally says women are not equal to men in all uh, aspects of life. The Quran says what? That women are equal to all, to men in all aspects of life. So to the Lord's um, I think maybe what he's getting at is that when you say they're women, it automatically creates an inequality. Uh, I'm not trying to like do, be, say this on you, but when you say mm. like how the men treat their women, it may creates an ownership as they are women. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Um, I, mean, I think that's trying, I mean, kind of what he's trying to get at. Maybe well, I just wanted you to explain. But um, okay. I didn't mean like they're women as in like they don't. Yeah, I, I understood what you're women, saying, like, but like maybe that wording is a little is a little iffy. I, I'm really impressed that, that you've taken this on. This is yes, a, 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 my goodness, and I, I, I compliment you for doing that, and I think you did made a tremendous effort at it, and, and where I really think you might want to explore a little more, you did some, but, well, I haven't spent a long time since I've heard that term, cognitive dissonance, and, and that really is an important issue in all of American society, because we tend to just ignore any facts that seem to disagree with our own feeling, and that's also where you have the, the confirmation bias, but I think one, to kind of think you one other thing that's been said, be careful about making very grand statements. For example, uh, if you take a look at how women are treated in some Muslim countries, uh, predominantly Muslim countries, much different than others. For instance, you can make an argument that in Saudi Arabia, they treat women one way, but in other Muslim countries, like in Jordan or some other place like Lebanon, it's a different society. So uh, be careful not to paint one big brush. These societies uh, are different. Religion is a very important part of the life, but there's also a secular part of lives too. And I think that's what you're trying to get at. So uh, I know you have only so much time, but there's a, there's a lot of complications here. Uh, so be careful not to, to, to make a wide, broad statement. It, it may be generally true, but there are a lot of very big exceptions out there when you're, when you're making those kind of comments. But I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you've talked about some issues that, that transcend religion, which in our politics today where we don't tend to pay much attention to facts or information that against our bias, and my compliments to you on exploring that relation. Well, I apologize if I just said my words. I didn't mean it. Hey, Darnell, if I might uh, interject there. I check with these guys. Yeah, applaud here. Um, one thing you're focusing on, though, is the negative aspects of these major religions. Perhaps you think about spin it the other way. What, what, what brings these things together? What are commonalities? Focus on the positive here, and you don't immediately turn off or people you don't immediately turn off half your audience, or people don't start bristling and start um, picking apart very little details in what you said here, because if you're going to focus on this one and what some of the major differences are and how we can, can fix those then, then you got to do your homework. you got to practice. you got to have your facts right. you got to have your quotes right, because people will look at that and pick that apart. Think about flipping it, saying, you know, there's a lot more similarities between these three major religions, because they all were basically founded in the same place around relatively the same time, same era, maybe that's something you think about rather than trying to drive in the negative wedge because people are going to get, they're going to bristle uh, at it nonetheless. So it's always easier to be uniting rather than dividing on big issues such as this. So holy will the controversy aspect. I think that, that's been talked about enough. What I, what I was more wanting to hear about was this the solution was very quick and it was um, from a young age we're going to teach children. I mean like uh, I can elaborate more on that meaning uh, I was going to set up classes for you know new parents or expecting parents and, uh, to have classes in school just teaching kids uh, about because I think uh, the basic this starts understanding each religion including your own uh, so you can understand because it. uh, it's easier to dislike something if you don't know about it so I feel like if you just teach everybody the same uh, basic knowledge of each religion, 
a smaller revision, and then uh, this problem would be solved. Not solved, but helped. I don't think there's any solving of this problem in, time, in my lifetime. Yeah, I thought you hit on like a, like a possible solution. Like, I don't know that you'll ever completely solve this, but I thought you hit on a possible solution when you were talking about how we're all different. So there, there's, the, the one thing I would suggest is like, I think it would be good to teach children from a young age about our differences. Like there's, there's personality tests like DISC profile, and there's emotional intelligence uh, tests. Um, there's others that aren't Myers-Briggs. Not everything's coming to mind right now, but that might be a good way where if we from a young age just knew, oh, Here's, here's everyone's differences, and here's people that are like me, and here's people that aren't like me, and here's why, but it's no big deal. I, th I think that's kind of what I w where I would head in, in terms of the solution. I was say, I like, I like the idea of, the, of like classes to, to teach people, because I remember my freshman year, I was in AP World, and we had to learn about all the different religions, and that really kind of opens your eye a little bit and, and widens your, your keyhole view on things. But I also, I also liked how you used your pastor as a source to show to show the bias. I think that was really a, kind of a smart move on kind of showing that one side of it. Yeah, um, I think you're absolutely right with what you're saying. You know, a lot of the misunderstanding that comes from certain extremists in any religion. You know, we see this even you know people trying to support their political views, saying, "Well, I'm a Christian," and the Bible it says this, that, and that, but what they're doing is they're sanctioning certain parts of the doctrine and completely ignoring the rest, as God says to love everyone, and all sin is equal to, in God's eyes, and stuff like that, so excuse me, they're trying to, you know, act like one is true and ignore the other just to support what they believe. Um, yeah, so I just think that, like you said, is absolutely right, and like you were saying, um, how the country, you know, was founded on Christianity or Catholicism, you know, just kind of that same branch, although it doesn't say that in the Constitution, you know, it kind of said, like, a lot of the founding fathers, they did have faith. And so that's what you mean by that, not necessarily, like, it says, oh, everyone, and, you know, is going to be